Shalom Rastafari. This is Wendem Yadam. This is Brother Ras Yadinos Tefari. And we want to continue with uh, what uh, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, what the Moshiach, what the Mashiach, what the Messiah, our Black Lord and Savior, what he said from what the pastor and the preachers, in the words, Rastafari and the Bible truth versus the pastor and the preacher's lies. And this is not to say that all pastors and preachers are are lying. Some actually are seeking to be faithful to the Bible truth. And because of that faithfulness to the Bible truth, many of them have been truly interested, curious, and, and searching out what those of us as as um Faithful Rastafari, those of us as Rastafari who seek to be faithful to the teaching of His Imperial Majesty, are disseminating. Now, in continuing from the previous videos, because there's a lot that we can speak on, and as you should already know, there's a lot that's going on in the world around us, but we need to be grounded. The main thing is we need to remain grounded in these particular times and yes there is so much things to say right now there's so many things that we could reason on and touch on yet the inspiration through the holy spirit is reminding i and i and reminding i that we need to disseminate and preach and and maintain the center the core message and this picture here let's bring up this um picture some may have seen it and it's I think called uh Yeshua Selassie picture and it's a uh, a drawing of I don't know the artist or the artist that drew this somewhat seemed like a computer generated um picture or animation but however it is it pictures a Jesus or a Christ like image if you can zoom in on this you can see it has dreadlocks, and, and the color is closer to the color or the flesh of the Messiah being a ethnic Hebrew or Jew or black Jew or Ethiopian Hebrew. And this picture here of um, the emperor, drawing of the emperor in a prayerful, in a prayerful pose, posture, and position. Like we said, we wasn't always so, we had this picture a while, and some might have seen it, but for certain reasons which are obvious, we wasn't so so inclined to this particular picture because it seems to say that, you know, what certain Christians out there say concerning His Majesty not receiving Rastafari revelation because of all the confusion in this Babylon you know, in this religious confusion, this mystery Babylon that's going on where the half of the story has not been told. But all thanks be to the King of Kings in the name of Christ that even their number is up. Babylon's number is up, which refers to Daniel's prophecy, some say, where it says that uh, knowledge shall, shall go to and fro, like they shall go to and fro, and, and knowledge and information, in other words, shall be increased. So we're living in a time of an increase of information. Now, this picture, picture right here, um, generally we find that His Majesty himself would be pleased with this because it resonates with his faith. So if we approach it as Rasta, in a sense, which is almost to say like... Um, a newborn but not fully mature, not fully grown up, we might dislike this particular picture because, like, His Majesty is bowing and we would say, uh, you know, His Majesty now bow, so forth and so on. You know, where he does not bow to, to the Antichrist or to evil or to that which is not true. And he does pray to the Son as the Son, prophesied concerning the Father. And this is a very important, this is the important part of prophecy for us to understand and for us to preach and to disseminate so that our Christian brothers and sisters out there, as many of us were or were born into Christian families or homes, um, have been able to receive Rastafari or to be um, drawn to or attracted or called to 
Rastafari in whatever form or fashion that we might have initially received that initial call or message. And this is why in the teaching concerning Abraham and Abraham, this particular week's uh, sabbatical Torah portion, we find to be very interesting and relevant when we study it from a metaphysical or spiritual perspective. Now, this quote here is from his Imperial Majesty. The quote says that the propagation of the Christian faith among nations has become a task of paramount importance in this age, dot, 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 ellipsis. Let us labor to lead our brothers and sisters to our Savior, Jesus, or Yeshua, Yehoshua, Jesus, in the Ethiopic, who alone can give life in its fullest sense. The teaching and the words, the utterance of the King of Kings, Negus Neges Zechopia, Emperor Haile Selassie I, the last King of Kings of Ethiopia, which is another fulfillment of prophecy, another fulfillment of prophecy. Now, in continuing with what Jesus said from what he did not say or what the past or what many Christians believe, because this is what, this is the other Jesus that Paul warns us and reminds us about concerns the coming of Christ or the return of Christ because many people speak of the return of Christ or Christ is coming again. And the Bible teaches something similar to that, but as they say, the devil is in the details. And because people lack the details, they are, they are misled and they are deceived. And this is not the work of the spirit of truth, but the work of the spirit of the Antichrist to deceive many folks. So many people are talking about Jesus returning and the return of Christ. But the Bible teaches what the Bible says and what the true Christ says and teaches is, and his testimony is the return to Christ. In other words, it's about our turning to and returning to God the Father in and through the living example and the template of Jesus Christos, not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Now, we're going to bring up this scripture right here, and this is Matthew. Let's send to this so you can... This is from the book of Matthew, and this is a Ethiopian um, Christian software right here, IOTA, Iota software. And as you can see, this is Matthew chapter 28, here my Wengel, Ahaya Cement. And it says, in the end of the Sabbath, it begins off verse 1, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to what dawn toward the what first day, the Ehud, or what we call today in the Western misconception Sunday, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Bet sen betim mecharasha mejamariyal ken sinega. Megadellawita Mariamena, Huletanya Yitu, Mariam, Mekabrun, Liayu Ametu. Then it speaks about, and behold, there was a great earthquake. There was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it in their home. Yegita Melaaka Kasamai Silewarde Talak Ayamidura Menawet Ahone Kurbom Dinagayuna Ana Kabal Ana Kabalo Ana Kabalo Abelayu Atek Emete. So an angel or Melaak, which probably they would call this today like an extraterrestrial or a celestial or UFO 
that's what they will call it today after this great earthquake that an angel of the Lord now notice the key it says it's not just an angel but it qualifies it Yegita Melaak Adonai Melaak an angel of the Lord or of the Adonai of the true master our Lord and Savior descended from heaven descended from heaven now we know that the overstanding of the scripture is spiritual. In other words, that there is a spiritual, though it's speaking in, in natural terms or earthly terms, we know that the overstanding of this or the real metaphysical application of this is spiritual. So these are types. These are similes. One can even say they're Christian mythology, but the fullness of it is pointing to a metaphysical operation. You know, it was a metaphysical operation. So, it, so we can look at this earthquake as a literal earthquake because there are literal earthquakes and there are literal descents of the angels of the Lord as well as there are other angels which have fallen, fallen angels. They talk about UFOs that have crashed and fallen, so forth and so on. This doesn't sound like any angels of the Lord. This sounds like certain fallen angels which descended, as it says right here, which also descend from heaven. So what we just want to point to right here is a reconstruction or a reinterpretation of this UFOlogy and angelology in what the Bible actually um, shows us, that there are two classes, in other words, of UFOs or of angels or of aliens. There are those angels or aliens of the true God, and there are fallen angels or aliens. Now, it goes on to basically speak about what happened at the time of the ascension or after the ascension of our Master and Medicine, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, what we want to do is scroll. Let's scroll further along. And this is roughly around the area of what's called the Great, um, the great uh, Commission. The Great Commission. And around verse 16, where it says in verse 16, it says, Asarandu deka mezamorit gin. Yesus o wada zezacho terara wada galila hedu. Then the eleven disciples, the Asara Andu, Deka Meza Morit, they went away into Galilee. They went away wada galila hedu into a mountain where Yesus or where Yeshua where Yeshua had appointed them, or Bamarinya, Yesus, Weda Zezacho, Weda Zezacho, Weda Azezacho, Weda Zezacho, where he had commanded them, Terara, to the mountain, or a mountain, where he had appointed them. Now, this is a close encounter, definitely of an ancient kind that Yeshua had appointed them to a particular mountain, not to a valley, not to some place underground in some so-called secret place, but on the top of a mountain, to a mountain, right? So we have the extraterrestrial connection, the angelic connection there. Then in verse 17, it says, By you, Tim, Gize, Segadulet, Yetet, Arat, Arugin, Nebaru, and when they saw him, who are we speaking about? We're speaking about the 11. And, and make sure we're about to a couple of days, about a day or so, about a day or so from uh, a couple of days from now, we're going to be on 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. So here are the 11 disciples. They went away into Galila. And these, these, these words, such as Galila, if you have the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, I have downloaded, look it up, just out of curiosity, look up some of these, these Hebraic names and words within the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. And that might open up your understanding of, of, of uh, transformation of mind. You know, or don't be conformed to the worldly so-called counterfeit whitewashed Christianity, but trans, transform your mind to the true. Overstanding, since we're living in a time of 
of of of where a lot of hidden things and knowledge that has been suppressed for millennia is coming to the surface as as God said that in the latter times we would comprehend these things completely things that was guessed about or, or assumed or speculated on so here it says and when they saw him when the disciples the 11 saw him they worshiped him sagadulet or they bowed to him they prostrated to him but here's the key it says but some doubted yet at rat rugin nebru nebru they were there were some who yet at rat ru However, there were some who who had doubted, some who were not sure they had doubted. And here in verse 18, here, and here we're coming to what's known as the Great Commission, the same thing that His Imperial Majesty basically is speaking about in this particular in this particular speech right here, where it says the propagation of the Christian faith among nations, different nations, different peoples, languages, customs, even races, has become a task of paramount importance in this what age? In this age, because the Imperial Majesty ushered in this Aquarian or New Age ever since the coronation nearly 81 years ago. He says, let us labor, labor, the labor of love to lead our brothers and sisters to who? to our Savior, Jesus, and to that exemplary life. That's what Christ taught. Who alone can give life in its fullest sense, spiritually, who can give life to us in its, in its fullest sense. Now, here, Yeshua, Jesus, Jesusim, Rebena, Indi, Below, Tenagaracho, Indi, Below, Tenagaracho. Sultan Hulu Besamayina Bemidara Tesetang Tesetang and Jesus Yeshua came and spake to them saying all power all power really power in this sense need to be understood correctly. This is Sultan. Sultan is authority. One can even say authorization. All power in the sense of all authorization is given, has been given to me, to Yeshua, to the Bain Ha Elohim, to Yegziavihir Lij, well, the Yegziavihir, to the Son of God in heaven, in the heavens, that means over the so called extraterrestrial, over, over the Nebiru, Nebiru over the asteroids and comets and the heavens and the alignment and in the earth. That, so this authorization now has been given by who? By God, his father, God, our father, to his number one son, to the only begotten. This authority has been given to him. And now verses 19 and 20 are very important as verses 19 and 20 is really the whole subject matter that we wanted to speak about in this particular um, vlog here. Because verses 19 and 20, you can see Bamarinya in the Amharic, the Metz of Kedus, it's one, it's one, it's, it's one, it's one. Now, they break it down in the English into two verses, but the real sense has to be understood by comprehending this entire passage here. So in the English it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy it says ghost here, but you have to strike this ghost here. That's a whole different reality. You understand? It's supposed to be Holy Spirit, but this is a King James errata. This is one of their erratas, their errors. So strike that and holy. Let's see, a ghost is a is a earthbound, tormented, so disembodied um, spirit of a dead person who's tormented and earthbound. That's what a ghost really is. Go look it up. It's supposed to be Holy Spirit. A ghost, a zeitgeist, in other words. They're talking about a geist, geist, like poltergeist and zeitgeist. 
You know, saying so, strike that right there. That's a that's a major error right there. Um, it's like a glitch, like when you open web pages and it says that the page has not opened. It's open, but with errors. That's where uh, many Christians are. They have their conscience is open to Christ, but with errors, significant errors. That unless they're weeded out, it will affect um, futures. Teaching them to observe all things. This is why we're supposed to teach. Teaching them to do what? To observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you. So we're supposed to teach others to observe all things that we have been commanded from the 11 disciples' perspective. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, lo is short for look, look. You understand? Look, look and see. Here it is. I am with you always. They say always. Very strange. They didn't put always. They say I am with you always. All the way. Even to the end of the world or even to the end of the age. And this is very significant. Because His Majesty has ushered in a new age. Then the previous age basically has come to some sort of a fulfillment. So 1930, the coronation of the King of Kings, the 72 nations bowing and bearing witness and fulfilling both the mystery, the mythology, and biblical prophecy is very significant. Now, Bamarinya says in the Mark, it says, In Gedi, he do. In the Gedi, he do not. Hulgize Now, this translation here is pretty much accurate based on the Amharic. It's pretty much accurate based on the pure language. However, the ghost part is still a major error, the ghost part. In fact, I would even suggest everywhere you find ghosts, just strike it through for pen and put in the, put in the margin or the top or the bottom or next to it, put spirit put spirit just to remind yourself or anybody else that comes reading that Bible after you that there's some error here. Whether they choose to go back and, you know, back to the vomit or not, that's up to them or to wallow in the mud, that's their choice. But we are commanded here because as the disciples in true apostolic Christ, Christina, apostolic Christianity based on the teaching of the apostles, we are to do, be about this same work. This is what Christ means when he says to occupy, right? Occupy until he comes. But we are not to so much look for him as many Christians look for him. He says, look right here. He says, look, I am what? With you always. And Bamarinya, it says, in the home, look and see, behold, here he is. And look and see, behold, here he is. In the home, in a, I, Anna. I, inne, ani, inne, iska, until alem, until the world or the age, the cipher, fitzame, deres, until its completion, the completion of the cipher. Now, people get confused about the world and the earth. Like when it says the end of the world, it's speaking about the alem, fitzame, iska, alem, fitzame, deres, until that completion, that end of that cipher. Hul gize, always, all the time. Ka inantagar, with you all, neng. Ine neng, I am with you always. Ana noki, ana noki, I am with you in the Hebrew, I am with you always. So, how is it? that many pastors and preachers and other Christians always talk about how they're just waiting for him to come back. They're waiting for him to return. If he has taught us from the apostles, the disciples, the apostles, and down to us and preserved even in this word of Scripture, that he is with us always, 
even until the end of the age? How is it that they are looking for his coming back, especially in a fleshy, a fleshy sense? So this is just a word on this matter. So it's more about not the so-called the coming back of Christ in that sense or in the worldly sense, but it's Christ being born or being birthed in us, the Christ consciousness being birthed in us because he's with us already. He is already here. He is still here. He says to the disciples he will be with us always. You understand? Even until the end of the fulfillment of the age. But we cannot see him. We cannot, like Christ has said to the disciples, he said, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is here. Men like walk up and down, but men don't perceive that the kingdom of heaven is here. So the kingdom of heaven is already here, but men do not perceive it. Men do not realize that they walk on right past the kingdom of heaven. So it's about our consciousness must be turned to, returned to, repented to, must return to Christ and, and to the Christ consciousness and our minds, in other words. It's about a, an, an ascension, a resurrection, a transformation of our minds and our, our um, perspective. Perspective is salvation. It depends on how you see it and how you're able to receive it. So my brothers and sisters, once again, Shalom Rastafari. Stay tuned, stay in tune with the King of Kings and his Christ in spirit and in truth. Shalom.